but we need to do that again because that's that's a failure in churches. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's this way of baptism, there's that way of baptism, and, but it's all with way. Jesus Christ. So, so we left off on John chapter one, verse thirty-one. So we're going to be verse 31 to uh, 34 for the next couple of weeks. Then we move on. But okay, like I told Ron last week, we're pausing, stopping, and studying what we are right now. We're going to, you can't say you don't know. And that's how I feel. Lord God the Father, just ask you to bless this time, Lord, in your word, Lord. In searching the scriptures, Lord God, and I just pray for God, Lord, whatever business you have. Lord God, I pray you bring people here so we can grow and learn. Lord, we can establish a foundation of King James Bible in Jesus Christ. Without the Lord. For Jesus' sake, we pray. Amen. So John chapter 1, verse 31. Last week we looked at the Lamb of God. We're going to be looking at that again. So, that will be coming up. But today, John chapter 1, verse 31. <coughs> and I knew him not, but that he should be made manifest to Israel, where, therefore I should baptize with water. Now what we looked at last week is verse 29. The next day John sees Jesus coming unto him and says, Behold the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world. John is out baptizing. The Pharisees, the scribes, the Sadducees sent these men to John and say, what are you doing? What is this? Well, like the churches in Daytona Beach sent somebody down to the, to the farmer's market. What are you doing? What is this all about? And Jesus shows up. And what John the Baptist is saying, I say John the Baptist because the John that writes the Gospel of John is not John the Baptist. It's John the Apostle. John the Baptist is there talking to the to the to the, the people of authority. And guess, in lo and hold, guess who pops up in the crowd? John looks up, and there's Jesus standing there, and he's like, uh, "There he is." Point. I would assume he's pointing. I mean, if you're in a crowd of people and you're trying to point your husband or your daughter or something, if you think, you know, you'd be pointing. That's the one. That's the one I'm talking about. So, what we learn here is John had no idea who Jesus was, even though last week we looked at that John and Jesus were related. John's mother and Mary, Jesus' mother, they were cousins. So I think this is second cousin removed or something like that. But we also learned that John had no idea who Jesus was. So, as far as that family of Elizabeth and the, the family of, of Mary, they weren't together. They were separate, that John was his way, Jesus was his way. So nobody could say, well, Jesus influenced him to do what he's doing, and Jesus coerced him to do what he's doing. It's No. They lived in, I'm going to say, separate areas. They, they did not grow up together. If they ever saw each other, the same time would have been the three times that the males would appear before uh, the Lord at the, at, the, at the Feast of Jehovah. But he says, verse 31, I knew him not. So, what we read is John does not know that John did not know until that moment that Jesus there he is and we're going to learn further as we look into the baptism how Jesus is revealed to him uh, again Luke 136 it shows that they were family and behold he's coming to Israel Jesus so the baptism is a public proclamation. It's not salvation. No, no baptism in the Bible is ever salvation. 
John's baptism is, I'm gathering all Israel together in one place because one day the Messiah is going to show up. It is to gather the crowd, as I just said, all Israel, come on, get together, get over here, because here he comes. Uh, it's for Israel to show the God in sincereness. They are coming to John, and John is preaching repentance. Listen, the Messiah is coming. The one has been preached about, he's coming. You've got to repent of your sin. Repent and be baptized. That's what they're doing. Because, again, the Messiah is coming. And it's been prophesied in Isaiah chapter 40. The baptism is not a salvation. It is a public testimony that, hey, you know what our scriptures say? It's finally happened. Now that's not going to happen at the rapture of the church. God's not going to gather all the church into one central place and on the earth. But Jesus Christ is going to gather all the believers in one central place in the clouds. Every born again Bible believing Christian from the day that, G that they went out preaching in Acts to when the rapture happens, the last Christian, we're all going to be gathered in the clouds one day to meet Jesus. So verse 32, John bared record. So a record is a public testimony of factual documentation. The fact is, though people don't believe it, you can bring the Bible into a courtroom, and if you have a proper judge who's not biased, good luck, you would be able to bring the Bible into the courtroom and say, hey, here's the written proof. And it would settle the matter. But today it won't. So you would say, what record do you have that Jesus is who he says he is? John bared record saying, I draw the Spirit descending upon from heaven like a dove, and it bowled upon him. And I knew him not. So the illustration is that when Jesus comes, John is made a revelation of Jesus. Jesus steps, and we already see this. There is that revelation that Jesus approaches John. And John says, listen, I don't need to be baptized. You don't need to be baptized of me. I need to be baptized of you. He already knew who Jesus is. But since Jews require a sign, when John takes Jesus into the water and baptizes him, now we're going to see the spirit of the dove. That dove coming down, a type of dove, is not... Not a dove, but let me say dove. Is a sign. It's a sign to John the Baptist. Yes, that's to confirm what you said. There's the Messiah. There's Jesus. There's the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. So, in verse 32, again, John bear record saying, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like, like, a dove. It didn't say the Holy Spirit came down as a dove. So all the pictures you see of the dove coming down from heaven is false. It didn't say dove, it says like a dove, and I'm not going to go into modern Bibles to see what they say. The King James Bible says like. Like is not is so when we're looking at the Holy Spirit come down we need to see how a dove acts not what a dove is so he says I saw John said I saw the Spirit capital S knows the capital S that's the Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit has no form Spirit. Spirit is there. There's no form. So when he says, I saw the Spirit, not the ghost, when I saw 
saw the spirit, it had no bodily shape. It did not come down looking like a dove. The wind is the spirit. Now tell me what the wind looks like. You can't. But if I say, oh, the wind is blowing like major gusts, well, you can see it with the leaves. And, you know, and the spirit, you know, if that piece of paper flying through the air looks like a bird, that's what John's saying. John's saying, I didn't see a dove, but I seen a, a, some something, a spirit, and it came down like a dove. It came from heaven like a dove, and it abode upon him. Now the Holy Ghost has born. I mean, you've seen pictures of ghosts. You know, sheets, and there's an outline. I believe in ghosts. I believe the Bible says there's ghosts. All right, a ghost, if you were to see a ghost, well, there's an outline. It's, it's a shape of something. John did not say ghost. He said spirit. A ghost has form. A shape doesn't. A spirit doesn't. So that's a very important wording. Again, I don't look at modern Bibles, but I wonder if they mess with that. We don't need to be in the modern Bible. Let's see what our Bible says. We'll focus on that. Because the Bible does say about the Spirit of God, He is the Holy Ghost, and He's also the Holy Spirit. There's a big difference. Descending. Descending is to go down, come down from heaven. So the Holy Spirit leaves heaven and is coming down like a dove would be flying. You ever see a dove? You ever watch him? I don't know if you ever, but next time you see a dove, you're sitting out there, watch how he comes down. There's a mat, I've seen it, their, their wings are out, you know, they're, they're fully out and they're like a kind of weird flapping. That weird flapping without the bird, that's how the Holy Spirit came down. And it's unique because I've seen different birds. That, you know, that, that spirit, that dove has one particular way. And sometimes, we'll see in a moment, I'll look at, give you some facts, it makes a, that weird sound when it comes down. You know that the, when it makes that sound, I'll give you right now, it's not the female, it's a male that makes that coo. So you can't say the Holy Spirit is a female when the, 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 the attributes of a dove, it's a male. So it's possibly, he says, I see it come down like a dove. It could have been making that, that cooing sound. That would, and now if you can't see the Spirit, if you heard like a cooing of the wind, and that's very important. Like. Like means sim similar. Resembles. It says like, it did not say it was or is. I mean, if I were to say, if I saw an accident and a guy evaded the accident, I said, officer, the car was a, a Ford Mustang. Well, the police department would go looking out for a Ford Mustang. But if I say officer, it was blue, it was like, a US, like an SUV. It would not say it was an SUV, but it, it resembled many cars today. They look like, there are cars that look like the competition's car, and you would be fooled. Say, you know, what? I think it, I think it looks like a Ford, but it may be a Chevy. And so when I say it's like this thing, you know, you, you go to the store and there's all kinds of apples. Well, I, I, it's like that one, but it may not be that one. And there's a big difference when the Bible says like, as, is. you got to pay attention when you read your King James Bible. you got to pay attention to every word. Because the Holy Spirit is not plain Scrabble. Well, oh, i got these letters and i got to make, you know, i got to use these letters to get good points. That's not how he does the Bible. Every, Jesus, and we'll get uh, later, but Jesus tells the devil, but... By every word of God does man live. Every word. So when he puts every word in the Bible, it's there for a reason. And woe to be the people that, you know, the Bible's not true, it's written by man. No, it's written by God in each specific word, each capitalization. 
Now we have a King James Bible. And if you come to a place where it's italic size, you say, what's that italic? What's that mean? Why is that word? Why is that words? Why are they italicized? Because when they took the Bible and translated it, they did not have a proper word to put in the English. So they properly put the word or phrase in italic. Say, Listen, this is, this is the truth. We don't have a word to put there, but we prayed about it. We, we search each other of our committees that we put forth the king. This is what we think should be there, but the italicized, it's, it's not in the original. I don't want to use that expression, but that's what the italicized words are. Now he says a dove, it's a bird. The Spirit, the Holy Spirit had no form, so it was not a dove. So all the pictures of the dove coming down is ridiculous. And we'll run to another place here, Acts chapter 2. I know it's kind of hard with the wind. The wind feels good. Acts chapter 2. We run into another problem with religious and pictures and icons and symbols. I can't hope. Acts chapter 2. I'm trying to work my page, my notes, and my Bible. Uh, Acts 2.2. 2. Now here's another problem. Suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind. Can you see the wind? We've got a lot of wind right now. We can't see it, but we can see it turning our Bible. And it was filled the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as unto fire. Now have you ever seen the picture of the apostles gathered around and they have little fires above their head? Does it say like or did it say fire? It wasn't fire. But the image appeared as fire. So the description of the Bible is it was like a dove. It was like fire. Where Jesus will tell us, uh, the, the, the Holy Spirit will tell us, and we'll look at it in a moment, Noah took a dove and sent the dove out of the ark. It was a dove. Jesus tells us that there is fire in hell. It's a fire. Here, it's light. It's not the real thing. So, it descended from heaven like a dove. Alright, so a dove. A dove stockpiles seeds in its crop. That's an enlargement of the esophagus. So when you see a dove eating, he's not digesting. It's going in for a supply. They're primary seed eaters. Uh, they're weed seeds like, like corn. That's interesting because in Mark chapter 4 it says the sower went out to sow seeds. The seed is the word of God. Look at it with scripture with scripture. Doves devour the word of God. The Holy Spirit puts forth the word of God. You know what happens when doves eat seeds and they poop out seeds? Sometimes those seeds will start growing. So the Word of God comes from the Holy Spirit. Uh, the cooing, again, is the males, not the female. They fly fast. They have two eggs at two-week incubation time. And the Bible says Jesus sent them out two by two. Interesting. When God made Adam, He says, I need a help with me for Adam. And... What were the first two for the... Uh, what, what, what was the first children to mention the Bible for Adam and Eve? It was two of them. Cain and Abel. See, this all goes together in the Bible. The, the, you know... Let's see, let me just pick a bird. Okay, there's a dove. He flew by. No, that's not it. And when you look at the characteristics and you study with the... See, when you read the Bible and you're studying the Bible, doesn't mean, okay, I did my Bible reading for today. Chalk it up. Look up what the words are. Why did God use dove? Study the word dove. 
And then you find studying, wow, look at all the interesting things. That's where man fell with the Bible. They don't study. They're pairs for mate for life. That male and female, that uh, dove, when they get together, their husband and wife, or whatever they call them, their animal, for life. You know, once you get the Holy Spirit through Jesus Christ, He stays with you for eternal life and never leaves thee or forsakes thee. Isn't that interesting? Uh, no. One bad thing about having an outdoor Bible study, your Bible, Pete. They need three things. They need a safe tree to make their home. And the Bible says men are like trees. Interesting. They need water. Jesus said, I'm the water of life. And they need seeds. And the Bible says the word and the sword is the sow the seeds, and the seed is the word of God. So if you've got the Holy Spirit living in you after you're saved, if you don't read the water of life, you don't read the seed of life, you are starving the Holy Spirit. Think about that. And when you sin, since the Holy Spirit's in us, all right, let's, let's take something simple to think. Smoking a cigarette. If you are smoking, the spirit that's in you is also smoking. If you're drinking alcohol, you're having the Holy Spirit that dwells in you. Now, it may not, I mean, God's not literally drinking alcohol, but that Holy Spirit in you, you are subjecting God to that. And any other sin, the sins of your eyeballs, the sins of your ears. You are subjecting God who's in you if you're saved to be subject to the sins that you're doing. Give the Holy Spirit a safe tree away from sin. Give the Holy Spirit the water of life. Give the Holy Spirit the seed of life. And what you do with the Word, you go out and plant. And we're told to go in all the world and preach the Gospel. You can read your Bible, but if you're not witnessing, the Holy Spirit ain't getting that seed. From you, at least. Uh, its first flight is in the morning to the feeding grounds. The first thing a, a dove will do in the morning, he takes flight and he's going to where, where he knows there's food. Uh, and they'll stop to seek danger. In other words, where he's flying to, he, the dove may stop and, okay, and he wolves around and he, am I safe? Uh, the taking off and landing is a whistling in the wings. And we mentioned that before. That's what made what John heard. The whistling of the wings. I've heard that. It's interesting. Bird watchers have reported feeling startled. And like I said, if you've ever heard a dove come down, if he comes down next to you, you don't know he's coming down. He can startle you. Bird watchers have been, whoa, what was, oh, that was, a, that was a dove. That's maybe what happened to John. Whoa, what, oh. There's no gallbladder. The Holy Spirit never gets bitter. Never gets bitter. Bitterness comes from the gallbladder. There's no bitterness at all. The, the, the Holy Spirit never holds grudges. So what do we do when we hold grudges? Somebody, you know, somebody will say, well, you know, I'm filled with the Spirit. Oh, I don't like that Christian over there. Hey, hey, he's filled with the Holy Spirit. I don't like him over there. That ain't the Holy Spirit. I dealt with the Pentecostal one time. Oh, I'm filled with the Holy Spirit. I speak with the tongue. What do you feel about that guy? Oh, I can't stand. Okay. The Holy Spirit has, has no gallbladder, so neither should we. Uh, the male and female, this is interesting, provide milk for the young. Milk of the word that you may grow thereby. That's interesting. Uh, it's high protein and fat more than any other mammal. 
Wait a minute. The male and female dove that's a bird has milk glands? That's a mammal. The, the dove is against evolution. You look at a dove in evolution, that don't fit. You look at a dove, the type of the Holy Spirit. It's got to be creation. God made it like that. A whale is a fish, but it has milk glands, and it, it, it feeds it. That's a mammal. It's not. I love how God did that. Well, go ahead and prove, disprove evolution. The dove, the platypus, and the whale. And I haven't seen any whales get beached and grow legs and started walking. Really. And when whales do beach themselves, they drag them back out in the water. And why drag them back out in the water? Let them grow their feet and let them grow. And start walking. Nonsense. Uh, their, pref their preferred meal or place would be farms and gardens. That's where there are seeds. Do you recognize garden? <laughs> where man was first, where God made a garden? Farm, the first man's job was to be a, uh, a farm hand. He was a, he was a husbandman. Uh, dove is a German word for diving flight. That kind of flight they do, that's where the Germans get their name for it. And they're very strong flyers. But, that's all, that's all useful information, but the Bible did not say it was a dove. But it is an example of a dove. So, when somebody comes up to you and says, well, you know, see my tattoo, I've got a dove flying. Open up the John chapter 1 and says it wasn't a dove. I hope you can erase that. And when you see these church signs with the dove coming down, no. We're, I, I, I was at this church one time. They got the picture of the dove coming down on their sign. We're having Bible study. Uh, and you got a picture of a dove? And you're having Bible study. That's like the, the, the seventh day event. We're having Bible study on Saturday. Uh... You need to study the Bible a little more. Like today we saw a car. We saw a license plate. Florida license plate. And God we trust and had the Mason sign. No. No, 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 no. But let's look. Dove shows up 18 times in the Bible. Doves, plural, shows up 10 times. 10 is the number of Gentiles. Doves, apostrophe, plural doves, apostrophe, two times. Dove, apostrophe, s yes, once. 31 times in 31 verses, dove shows up. There are 22 verses in the Old Testament and nine verses in the, in the New Testament, only in the Gospel. Nine is the fruit of the Spirit. And it only shows up does it show up in the writings of Paul? Nope. The, the epistles? Nope. Only in the Gospels. So, let's look at Dove. Genesis 8. Genesis chapter 8. And if you want to get clean, I believe they have a Dove bar. You want to get clean, get clean by Jesus Christ. So the first time, Genesis 8, 8. 8 in the Bible is the number of new beginning. Start over. And he sent forth a dove. Now does it say like a dove or as a dove? It says a dove. So guess what Noah did? Give me that dove. There you go. John the Baptist said, like a dove. He sent forth a dove from him to see if the waters were abated from off the face of the ground. They're out in the, they're out in the ark. It's after 40 days and 40 nights. And 
Noah can't see nothing. And I want to know, it, what's it look like out there? But the dove found no rest for the sole of her foot. <coughs> Excuse me. And she returned unto the ark, for the water, for the waters were on the face of the whole earth. So the, the, the earth is still flooded. Then he put forth his hand and took her, her, and pulled her into him into the ark. So he brought the dove into the ark. He stayed yet another seven days. A week later, again he sent forth the dove out of the ark. And the dove came in to him in the evening, and lo, in her mouth was an olive leaf. Not an olive berry, an olive leaf. Plucked off. So, knew, so Noah knew that the waters were abated from the earth. So, the, so the, the dove goes out, now there are trees. You see the other miracle that God did there, like he did in the creation? There's an olive leaf. If God were to grow trees after the flood, it'd take a little while for the olive leaf to be. To be. God put those trees right back the way they were, like they were, just like Genesis chapter 1. The trees were where they were to be where they were like he did with Adam. He didn't plant nothing. Everything was wiped out in the flood. So there's that. Uh, verse 12. And he stayed yet other seven days and sent forth a dove. The dove. She returned not again unto him anymore. Sent forth the dove. She comes back. I can't find her. Sent forth the dove. Comes back with an olive leaf. Says forth the dove, the dove did not come back. Well, we have told you. She found a feeding ground. She found seeds. By what the dove does. Okay. Second Kings six. Second Kings six. Now you're going to be going home looking for doves. <laughs> Second Kings 6.25 Now there's, there's Elijah has called for no rain three and a half years. When he got no rain there's no crops. When he got no crops you got no food. You got no food, you're going to eat anything you can eat. So verse 25, there was a great famine in Samaria. That's Israel north. That's the capital of Israel north. And behold, they besieged it. They surrounded the city. They prevented anything coming in and out. Until an ass's head, that's a, that's a donkey's head, sold for four score pieces of silver. That's for food. And a fourth part of calf of dove's dung for five pieces of silver. They are so hungry, they are eating dove's doo doo. That's how hungry they are. And it's funny how a dove is mentioned in the, in the siege of Samaria. Something to it? I don't know. But that's how hungry they got. That's the second place. Well, after Genesis chapter 8, that's the next place the dove shows up. Song of Solomon. Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon. Chapter 1. This is an interesting one. Song of Solomon, chapter 1. Verse 15, we're looking at the dove. Got the one verse 15. It says, Behold, thou art fair. That's a good way to describe your spouse. My love. Hey. Okay. But behold, thou art fair. Thou hast dove eyes. 
dove's eye. Chapter 4, verse 1. So, if you want to see a picture of Jesus, Behold, thou art fair, my love. Behold, thou art fair. Thou hast dove's eyes with thy blocks. Black eyes. The eyes of Jesus Christ are black. I wonder what the picture show. Uh, chapter 5, verse 12. Again, talking about the love of Song of Solomon, which is a type of Jesus Christ. 5.12, and the eyes are the eyes of doves. If you read your Bible, you can find out what Jesus looks like, and you don't need to look at an Italian painter who doesn't look at the Bible. Hmm. I, I don't have it. Which I'm, when, I, when it comes across me again, I'm going to put it in my notes, but there's an actual name of the person that when you see these pictures of Jesus, the name of the guy and the story of the guy is he's a Roman Catholic Italian. According to what we read in John chapter 1, that's not the right one. So that's Jesus. Jesus is described having the eyes of a dove. The Holy Spirit is described as a dove. Matthew 3.16 Matthew 3.16 Now you're going to want to grab the dove and see. Let me look at your eyes. <laughs> Matthew 3.16, Jesus, when he was baptized, okay, Jesus is baptized. When he comes straight out of the water, lo, the heavens open. The heavens open like they'll open when we go up. The heavens open to rain upon Noah all the rain. When the heavens were open unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove. That's the first time he shows up in the New Testament. Like a dove. And whatever, it lightened upon him. I don't know how he saw that spirit, but whatever it is, it showed doing that it came upon Jesus. So, John chapter 1, verse 33. Let's hold our Bibles and hold our... <laughs> John 1, 33. Now next week, we're going to pick up on baptism again. But it's good to pick it up again, so, well, we already did it. Well, you'll, you'll hear it again, some of it again, some of it you'll hear new, and you put it repetition, guess what you're going to learn? And then when you deal with people who, who go against the, the doctrine of baptism, hey, mm -hmm. well, let me show you what the Bible says. And you're going to say, well, how did I learn that? Because you learned it twice. <laughs> And you're not going to know. You're going to think, okay, yeah, well, you know, doing the Bible. I'll... When you go to deal with people and what we're reading, what we're studying, and what the Holy Spirit will remind you what you know, it's already in your heart. You'll be like, wow, I didn't know I knew that. But you studied it. And good studying is repetition because we're going to look at the baptism of John again. It's come back up. We're going to study it. So John chapter 1 Verse 33, I knew him not. So, John is saying, hey, there is the Messiah, there is the Lamb of God, there is Jesus, and I, I had no idea it was him. I pointed him out, I baptized him, and to prove that it was him, the Holy Spirit came down, that's definitely him. Now, let me say to you, let me, shoot, let me tell you something. All right, John did not know. I knew him not. And he sees the Holy Spirit come down like a dove. I didn't know it was him. You would figure that 
like the Catholics draw the picture of Jesus with the halo around his head, you would figure if Jesus had a halo around his head, everybody would know, hey, there he is, the guy with the light bulb. You see that guy with the circle around his head? That's the one. You see, that proves to you that, the, that religion's wrong. Because what, if he had a halo around his head, why would John to say, there he is? He would, hey, everybody, look out for the guy with the thing around his head. So you see, that's nonsense. And John, I don't see a man with a halo. He says, I knew him not. I had no idea it was him. But he that sent me to baptize with water, acknowledging that Jesus is God, Isaiah chapter 40. I wonder what the Jehovah Witnesses do with that one. The same said to me, upon whom thou shalt see the Spirit descending, capital S, and remaining on him, the same as he which baptizes with the Holy Ghost. And I saw a bare record that this is the Son of God. So what we're going to do is next week, we're, before we go to the next day where Jesus picks up his first two disciples, we're going to rehearse ourselves back into the baptism. We're going to review everything with the baptism. And then we're going to pick up something that's not in the Gospel of John. It's in Matthew and Luke. I don't think it's in Mark. We're going we're gonna to pick up the temptation of Jesus. Now John doesn't talk about that. We go from the baptism of John, and here's two disciples of John going to follow Jesus. But I'm going to bring us outside the Gospel of John, and we're going to get into a very, very deep, lesson of the temptation of Jesus because it's going to deal with our temptations. And I'm going to show you what baptism all over again next week, Lord willing. And I'm going to show you after that, Lord willing, I don't, baptism may take one or two weeks. I'm going to show you three tools that Satan has only, only three tools in his toolbox that he uses against man. And I will show you those three tools with Jesus. I'll show you those three tools with Eve. And I'll show you three tools with David. And I, when we're finished with that ex extensive study about the temptations of the devil, you should be able to look at your life and say, you know what? That's the tool Satan's using in my life. He may not use that one. But I know he's using that one. But you'll find out that he uses all three. Now you would think, wait a minute, all mankind, you think devil would have more tools than that. No. We will learn three tools. Three tools brought Eve down. Three tools brought David down. And he did not bring the Lord Jesus Christ down. And we'll see how the Lord Jesus Christ defeated the devil. So baptism again next week, Lord willing, a rehash. And then we'll get into uh, what the baptism, and that's going to be a couple weeks. And we're just going to, because you know what, baptism is a is a heresy out there. Uh, we'll get we're going to get into the Passover and Lamb again, and then we'll get into the temptation. And then after that, we'll pick up back at John chapter one again. So, any questions? And after that, I got to get back going with this. Making more notes. <laughs>